Welcome to our tour of the MSC Maravilla. In this episode, we're going to show you everything this ship has to offer and where to find it. And whether you've already booked your own cruise on the Maravilla or are just dreaming of a vacation at sea, this guide's got something for you. We'll take you from front to back, bottom to top, and everywhere in between on this fully guided tour of the breathtaking Maravilla. And whether you cruise for the food, drinks, shopping, or entertainment, we've got you covered. Now let's get this tour started. Since decks four and below consist primarily of guest staterooms and crew quarters, we're gonna begin this tour at the rear of deck five at Waves Restaurant. Waves is one of three complimentary dining rooms on the Maravilla, where guests can enjoy breakfast with a view each morning and dinner each night. Our first dinner at Waves was the best, as both the prime rib and grouper were exceptional. After our first night at Waves, we found the quality of food to be a bit more hit or miss, although we were always able to find at least a couple of things we enjoyed, including these delicious desserts. And while it often did take quite a while to get our food orders, it was a good opportunity to enjoy a few drinks with our fun new table neighbors. As you make your way towards the front of the ship from waves, you'll soon find yourself at the lower level of the breathtaking infinity atrium. The atrium stretches all the way up to deck seven, but it's here at deck five that you'll often find live music. Here at the Deck 5 Atrium, you'll also find one of our favorite spots on the entire ship to grab a cocktail. As we enjoy a couple drinks at the Infinity Bar, we wanted to note that we received several differing opinions on how to pronounce the name of the ship. So, is it Meravilla or Meravilla? If you know, let us know in the comments. Right next to the Infinity Bar, you'll find one of several cruise card activation points. It's here that you can connect your credit card to your cruise card if you haven't already done so prior to boarding. The guest services desk can also be found at the Deck 5 Atrium, which is where you'll also find several kiosks where you can book your port excursions. Near the center of the ship on Deck 5 upwards, cruisers can find the panoramic elevators, which offer some fantastic views and are probably our favorite elevators out of all the cruise ships we've been on. With the exception of the business center, the rest of Deck 5 consists primarily of staterooms, so we're gonna skip ahead to the front of the ship. So we have reached the front of Deck 5, which is where you'll find the lower level of the theater, but you can't access it from Deck 5, so we're gonna head up to Deck 6. Just one floor up at the front of Deck 6 is where you'll find the entrance to the 985-seat Broadway Theater. And since the theater was completely empty on this visit, I decided to take the opportunity to be on the Broadway stage. Where's my performance? <laughs> Gonna need more than that. Do you got any magic tricks or anything? No rabbits in that hat? How's the show? Would you come back? I don't think he'd come back. I think he'd rather be at a bar. Oh yay, I got a round of applause. While my stage act may still need a little refining, we do have to say that the real performers did not disappoint, as we both found the 70s and 80s themed show to be pretty entertaining. Now that you've seen the theater, it's time to make our way towards the back of the ship, where guests will find a variety of options for drinks, dining, shopping, and entertainment. And speaking of entertainment, you won't find a more entertaining spot to be than in the promenade on deck six for the welcome aboard party or the white party. If you're looking to grab some drinks or do some dancing of your own at the front of deck six, then the Miravilia Bar and Lounge is the spot for you. Here you can also grab a specialty coffee or catch some live music in the evenings. Just a few short steps from the Miravilia Bar, cruisers can find one of the ship's many shopping destinations at the boutique, which offers a variety of clothing and accessories for men, women, and children. And if it's jewelry you're in the market for, you'll find that in the promenade as well. Right next door to the jewelry shop is one of the ship's many specialty dining spots, Ola Tacos and Cantina. Here you'll find a variety of Mexican food and of course, margaritas. 
And right next door to Ola is the chocolate lover's paradise, Jean-Philippe Chocolate and Cafe. Here you'll find all sorts of amazing things made out of chocolate, along with the best white chocolate mocha we've ever had on land or sea. And while these coffee drinks were not included in our Easy Plus drink package, in our opinion, they were worth the extra charge. In addition to coffees and a huge assortment of chocolates, cruisers can find a variety of French macarons at Jean-Philippe as well. And just a few steps from the chocolate and coffee shop, you'll find Jean-Philippe crepes and gelato. Your spot on the Meraviglia for crepes, Italian gelato, and sorbets. Right next to the crepe and gelato shop, cruisers can find the excursion desk, along with places to shop for snacks, tobacco and liquor, travel and pharmacy items, cosmetics and perfume, electronics, watches and sunglasses, and of course, more clothing. Situated among the six floor shops, you'll also find the Ocean K Specialty Restaurant, an upscale spot for seafood and wine lovers. As you continue to make your way towards the back of Deck 6, you'll reach the central atrium. Here you'll find another shop to your right, along with the photo gallery, the spot to find your photos which have been taken by the photography crew, and also equipment to take your own photos and video. And just on the other side of the atrium from the photo gallery, you'll find the Edge Cocktail Bar. This bar is the earliest to open at 6 a.m. and was our go-to spot for morning coffee and Bloody Marys. We love coming to the Edge Bar, not only for the coffee and the cocktails, but also for the beans. As you continue to walk towards the rear of the ship, you'll pass through the Emotions Immersive Gallery and this mesmerizing walk-through wine display. On each side of the wine display, you'll find the second of three complimentary dining rooms, La Olivo de Oro. And at the very back of Deck 6 is where you'll find the third complimentary dining room known as the Panorama Restaurant for its amazing panoramic ocean views. Now that we've shown you all of Deck 6, it's time to move one floor up to Deck 7 where at the far rear of the ship you'll find the Carousel Lounge. During our cruises, you could catch both a magic show and a rock circus show at this venue. And while we didn't catch a show here during our cruises, we did at least get a chance to peek inside. Just a few steps from the Carousel Lounge is where you can find the casino. And although neither of us are gamblers, we did both really enjoy the casino's vibrant decor and this cool glass walkway. We also found the casino bar to be perhaps the coolest looking bar on the entire ship and to offer a great selection of liquors. As you make your way out of the casino and towards the middle of the ship, you'll reach the Deck 7 Atrium Area, one of the most picturesque spots on the Meraviglia. It's here that you can look downwards on the ship's famous Swarovski Crystal Staircases, which not surprisingly are also the most popular spot on the ship to take photos. Located just a few steps from the Deck 7 Atrium, guests will find the spot to book their next MSC cruise vacation. So right next to the future cruise booking desk, there is an area where you can go outside on the deck, so we're going to go check it out. While the Meraviglia does not offer a whole lot to see or do on the exterior sides of the ship, we were happy to find a nice spot on Deck 7 to get some fresh air away from the crowds. Back inside, just on the other side of the atrium, was the bar that surprised us the most on the Meraviglia. While the champagne bar is fancy and does sell expensive bottles of champagne, we were surprised to find seven champagne cocktails that were included in the Easy Plus package, and each one we tried was delicious. Just a short walk from the champagne bar, meat lovers will find their go-to specialty restaurant at the Butcher's Cut. This American-style steakhouse offers guests a selection of fine wines, cocktails, appetizers, desserts, and of course, several mouth-watering steak options. Just a few steps from the Butcher's Cut is another one of our favorite spots on the Meraviglia. It's here that we found the best views of the always changing displays on the promenade's giant LED ceiling. Just a bit further forward on Deck 7 is where you'll find the TV and studio bar. While this space is used for activities such as dance lessons during the day, it really comes alive at night when it becomes the place to be for karaoke. Just on the other side of the Deck 7 promenade from the TV and studio bar is where beer lovers will find their happy place on the Meraviglia. Here at the Brass Anchor Pub, we found around a dozen different beers on draft, along with several more in bottles. We also found this to be one of a few good spots on the ship to enjoy some live music. And whether you're a kid or an adult, we'd recommend catching the dinosaur show from the pub's promenade patio. 
Next door to the pub and across the promenade from the Butcher's Cut is where you'll find the Kaido Sushi Bar and Kaido Teppanyaki Specialty Restaurants. If you love sushi as much as we do and want to book a meal at the Kaido Sushi Bar, we would recommend reserving your spot early as we were unable to get a reservation for lunch or dinner on the final day of our second Meraviglia cruise. Past the pub and the studio bar at the very front of Deck 7, guests will find the MSC Spa, which offers Meraviglia guests a variety of massages, as well as salon and beauty services. Now, so far we've shown you decks four through seven, and the next seven decks are staterooms only. So we are heading to deck 15, but along the way, we're gonna drop you off at deck nine to give you a quick tour of our stateroom that we filmed yesterday. Welcome to the least expensive stateroom we've ever stayed in on a cruise. Now, because we wanted to be budget friendly when booking this cruise, we went with the best available, which meant that the cruise line got to pick wherever our room was on the ship. And that's how we ended up on the ninth floor in 9094. Now, one of the first things we noticed when we came into the room was this green carpet. It is a little bit dated, but the rest of the room does look like it has been refreshed recently. Another thing we noticed is how big this room feels. Now, I know it's not very big, but I think because there isn't an extra couch or extra seating area in this room, it feels bigger than some of the other staterooms that we've stayed in on other cruise lines. Now the bed does appear to be king size and there are nightstands on either side of the bed and each side also has two different lights that you can turn on and off while in bed. And over to my right, you'll find a small desk area with a stool. And this is also where you're gonna find the only plugs that we can find in the room so far. So if you need more than those, you'll Want to bring an adapter. You'll also find the hair dryer in the drawer and right next to that you'll find the mini bar which we would love to show you what's in there but ours is locked. Now next to the desk is the closet. I will say that this stateroom probably has the least amount of storage out of any stateroom we've ever stayed at on a cruise ship but it does have about eight hangers and there's also a couple of drawers down below and there is a safe, but it is a little bit smaller than we're used to using. And we should also mention that you can fit a couple of suitcases underneath the bed as well. And you can also see that right behind me is the TV, which is a good size. And to the right of me, there is also a full length mirror, which I always appreciate when getting ready for those fancy dinners. Last, we do want to show you the bathroom, but right outside of the bathroom, we do want to point out that there is a key card holder that a room key must be in in order for your lights and your air conditioning to work. And there's also a couple of buttons to communicate with your steward. So if you don't want to be disturbed, just hit this button and they will not come into your room. All right, let's check out the bathroom. So here is our bathroom. Now it is a little bit tight, but most interior stateroom bathrooms are a little tight unless you're paying more for a suite. Now there is a little bit of storage up here. And we also think this shower is a pretty good size for an interior stateroom. Now that you've seen our room, let's head up to deck 15. Now on the 15th floor, you'll find the buffet, multiple bars and the pools. And we hope you're hungry because we're starting our tour of Deck 15 at the Marketplace Buffet. Upon entering the buffet from the main entrance, you'll find wash stations on the sides and generally a staff member reminding people to use them. Straight ahead, you'll find something unique to MSC ships and one of our favorite parts of this cruise, the mozzarella station. While the delicious, freshly made mozzarella could consistently be found on our first Meraviglia cruise, it was a bit harder to come by on our second one. Probably the freshest mozzarella I've ever had. Wow. Right next to the mozzarella station is the pizza station, where you can find what was easily the freshest and most delicious pizza we've ever eaten on a cruise ship. Along with the mozzarella and the pizza, the other highlights of the lunch buffet had to be the freshly baked breads, the pastas, and the cheeses. Before we check out more of the lunch buffet, we wanted to show you our favorite place to eat our lunch at the very back of the ship. Here we could almost always find an open table, plus we usually found the lines in this area to be shorter. And who doesn't enjoy dining in the fresh air with an ocean view? As we make our way back inside to show you the rest of the lunch buffet, we want to let you know that this is just one of three cruise ship tours that we've made on this channel over the past several months, and we plan to create more of these videos in the future. 
So if you're enjoying this tour and don't want to miss out on future tours of other ships, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn those notifications on. So for lunch today, we have got a mashed potato pot pie, Kung Pao chicken, a few different kinds of cheeses, including the fresh mozzarella that they make here on the ship. We've got a salad of eggplant and zucchini. Then there is a potato curry, some sort of Indian cabbage, some shrimp, a little dessert here, and of course, a piece of pizza. We saw some crew members getting this. It tastes a little like sauerkraut, just a little bit, which I love. Mm. It just melts in your mouth. In addition to lunch, cruisers on the Meraviglia can eat both breakfast and dinner at the Marketplace Buffet. Because we enjoyed the food in the dining rooms, we only ate at the buffet a couple of times for dinner. We found the overall food quality to be pretty good and similar to the lunch buffet, with the pasta, mozzarella, and pizza once again being the standouts. We did eat breakfast at the buffet many times during our cruises, but because the buffet was always so packed with people in the mornings, our breakfast buffet footage was limited. We did both find the quality of the breakfast food to be quite good, especially the French toast and the bacon. We also love that the breakfast buffet had white chocolate and honey to add to the already delicious lattes. And speaking of lattes, you can grab one at the buffet bar along with a variety of juices, sodas, and beers. As you make your way out of the buffet and towards the front of the ship, you'll find the atmosphere pool and the pool deck, along with two bars, one with grab and go food and one with ice cream. While you may find the pool deck to not be crowded on a cool day or completely empty early in the morning, it's always the place to be on a warm, sunny afternoon. At the front side of the pool is where you'll find the stage and dance floor, where you can enjoy live music, games, and dancing, all while soaking up some sun. And if you're less into dancing and more into relaxing with a drink in your hand, the Atmosphere Bar North can be found nearby as well. If you make your way past the Atmosphere Bar and just a bit further to the front of the ship, you'll find what was my favorite bar on our first Meraviglia cruise. Here you could find amazing alcoholic and non-alcoholic cocktails made with fresh squeezed oranges and a variety of other fresh fruits. This is the Strawberry Crush at the Bamboo Bar. It's got fresh strawberries, red grapes, and also orange. Sadly, during our second Meraviglia cruise around three months later, the lines here were much longer and most of the fresh juice options were no longer available. Since the bamboo area includes sections of deck 15 and 16 at the front of the ship, we're going to head one deck up to get a better view. Now in the bamboo area, you'll find a bar, a pool, four hot tubs, and ping pong and foosball. Now this area has a retractable roof, so if you're here during a cold weather cruise, you can still enjoy the area. Now that you've seen all of Deck 15, we're going to stick to the far front of the ship and show you what you can find on the top three floors. And if you didn't pay extra for an MSC Yacht Club booking, the answer to that question is not much, as the far front of Decks 16, 18, and 19 are all off limits to the majority of guests. Denied. Worth a try. Yeah, that's the Yacht Club, which we are not a part of, but we thought we'd try to show it to you. Thankfully, non-Yacht Club guests can still find plenty to do on the upper decks. They just have to head a bit further back on the ship. After you pass by one of several hot tubs overlooking the sides of the ship, you'll reach the walking track, the place to get in your steps while enjoying the refreshing sea breeze. If you prefer getting your exercise indoors, then you'll want to head inside to the gym. We found the MSC gym to be modern and well-equipped, but to not offer quite as good of views as some of the other ships we've sailed on. As you make your way towards the rear of the ship from the gym, you'll reach the arcade, which was a popular kids hangout during our visits. Just past the arcade, we were impressed to find a flight simulator, a Formula One race simulator, the sports court, and a miniature bowling alley. And in the middle of it all, you'll find what's known as the sports bar, although it never seemed to be open during our cruises. 
Just a few steps from the sports bar, you'll reach the far back of the ship, which is where you'll find the Horizon Amphitheater and the Horizon Pool. We found this pool to generally not be as busy as the main pool and to offer some amazing ocean views off of the rear of the ship. We also found the Horizon Amphitheater area to be the perfect spot to relax the day away and to dance the night away. Now that we've shown you all of Deck 16, it's time to head up to Deck 18. And in case you were wondering, there is no Deck 17 on the Meraviglia, because like the number 13 in the US, many in Italy consider the number 17 to be unlucky. One of our favorite spots on the whole ship had to be the Horizon Bar, as it was a great spot to grab an evening coffee or a cocktail while relaxing in the open air. We especially enjoyed this bar on our first Meraviglia cruise when it offered fresh squeezed orange juice, but just like the Bamboo Bar, it was no longer available on our second cruise on the Meraviglia. As you move forward on Deck 18 from the Horizon Bar, you'll pass by several activity and hangout spots for kids and teens. And my personal favorite photo spot, the Lego Barbies. But if you're looking for a place geared a little more towards adults, the Sky Lounge can be found just a few steps away at the middle of Deck 18. If you appreciate great music, amazing drinks, and even better views, then you'll definitely want to pay a visit to the Sky Lounge. We found the Sky Lounge to offer the most consistently well-made drinks, plus a list of cocktails only available at this location. Whether you prefer your drink with a view of the ocean, a view of the pool, or while listening to a talented jazz trio, the Sky Lounge has you covered. Now that we've shown you the back half of Deck 18, we typically show you the front half next, but as we mentioned earlier, if you didn't book in the Yacht Club, there isn't much to see. We are currently on the 18th floor in the Yacht Club area. And the light means denied. <laughs> he keeps getting denied because we're not part of the Yacht Club. A little windy out. Jamie can't even open the door. Hold on to your hat. With just one more deck of the Meraviglia to show you, it's back to the rear of the ship we go. While our tour of the ship may be nearing its end, we still have a lot more to show you in this video. And since nearly every Miravilia cruise out of New York or Florida visits MSC's private island, you'll definitely want to stick around to see everything it has to offer. And we promise you, it's a lot. After a quick change of clothes, we were ready to take on the Deck 19 ropes course just as the sun was setting. Once up on the ropes course, we found it to be incredibly windy, but also an incredibly beautiful spot to watch the sunset over the Caribbean. We didn't find the course to be particularly challenging, but we did find it to offer one of the best views on the entire ship and to be a great way to test your fear of heights. With the ropes course down, the water slides were next. And since it was pretty chilly, I generously let Skylar get the footage while I stayed dry below. There he is. So it's pretty cold out right now. It feels like maybe 65 degrees and this slide's gonna be freezing, but there's no guarantee it's gonna be open tomorrow. So gotta go down it when we can. <laughs> All right, water slides are closed now, but they said I could go down the last one. So I am running up there. Wow, look at that view. All right. Being on that ropes course for sunset was the most amazing way to end this day on the Maravilla. But our tour is far from over because tomorrow we are going to their private island, Ocean K. Now, as many of you may already know, Ocean K is pretty much an extension of the ship because you can find a lot of the same food, the same staff, and your drink packages will work on the island. And if you are thinking about staying on the ship during the day at Ocean K, you should definitely think again, and we'll show you why right now. When you arrive at Ocean K, your ship will port on the south side of the island. From there, you'll have several beaches and beach bars to choose from. While we did enjoy walking around the entire island, 
transport pavilions with golf cart taxis are available to help you get around. Between our two Maravilla cruises, we spent parts of three different days on Ocean K, and each one of those days, we began with a walk to the lighthouse, usually with a stop by Lighthouse Bay along the way. And that's where we're heading right now. Now, one thing we're excited about on this island is the bar at the lighthouse, and we know it's gonna get busier as the day goes on, so we're gonna try to get there early. But first, we're gonna stop by this beach and beach bar. While Ocean K does offer cruisers plenty to see and do, we do find it to be less developed and have a more laid back feel than Royal Caribbean's and Norwegian's private islands, making it our favorite of the three. The water here is so clear. This is gorgeous. We have made it to Lighthouse Bay, which is conveniently located next to the ship and also the lighthouse. And also behind us, there is a tiki bar and a snack shack. Now, for those of you who are wondering, the drink packages do work on this private island. And that is one of the main reasons that we booked this particular sailing. Now, when we booked this cruise, we decided to add on the easy drink package. But when we actually got on the ship, we were pleasantly surprised to find that we somehow had the easy plus drink package. And we'll tell you a little bit about the difference between those two packages later in the video. Got our first drink ordered. We didn't even have to go to the bar. So the sand here close to the water is very fine and powdery and soft. When you get up closer to the beach umbrellas, there is some coral and shells. So you have to watch where you're walking. Next, we're heading to the lighthouse. Ready to climb those stairs? While you definitely can purchase a ticket to climb to the top of the lighthouse, we never did. Because honestly, we were beyond content just chilling at the lighthouse bar. Ready for a drink? Yep. Located right at the base of Ocean K's 100 foot tall lighthouse, we found the lighthouse bar to be the ultimate island beach bar. We could almost always find a seat in the shade or in the sun, and the frozen cocktails were refreshing and delicious. But my favorite part of the lighthouse bar had to be the views of those vibrant blue Bahama waters. One of the things that I was looking forward to the most about visiting Ocean K was the lighthouse bar, and it did not disappoint. Those views were amazing, and the drinks were refreshing, plus they were included in our drink package. So as we mentioned earlier, your drink packages do work here on Ocean K, and the two most popular packages for adults are going to be the Easy and the Easy Plus packages. Now the Easy is going to include all of your drinks up to $7, and that includes a variety of beers, wines, well drinks, fresh juices, and coffee drinks, which are awesome on this ship. Now if you spend a little bit more for the Easy Plus package, that's going to include your drinks up to $9, which includes more beers, wines, premium liquor cocktails, and frozen cocktails. During our first visit to Ocean K, when we filmed the majority of this footage, our cruise was only around 60% occupied, and we were not able to dock on our first day due to high winds and rough waters. As a result, only around half of the island's bars were open, and much of the island felt nearly deserted. But when we returned to Ocean K just three months later, we docked for the full day and a half. The island was much busier, and all but a couple of the bars were open. In addition to the lighthouse bar, another of our favorite spots on the island Island, included the rocky area just north of the lighthouse, where you'll find one of the most beautiful little coves we've ever seen. Think we can get a waitress down here? Probably not. If you're into shelling, you can find several huge conch shells along Sunset Beach. I've never seen so many huge conch shells on a beach before. It's pretty cool. But all shells must remain where you found them. We also found this area to be very relaxing, although the sand here was the least soft of all the island's beaches. As you can see, this beach is much less busy, but it's also a lot more rocky. I can definitely hear the ocean. In that ocean, oh, two, two oceans. oceans at the same time. If you make it to the far north end of Sunset Beach, you may not find any people, but you will find the helipad and this beautiful gazebo. 
We also really love the North Island, which has two beautiful beaches within just steps of each other. So this section of the island might be my favorite because you literally have two beaches, a beach bar, and a snack shack all within about 100 feet of each other. Our favorite North Island beach was Bimini Beach, where we experienced some of the calmest and most beautiful waters we'd ever seen during our second cruise on the Maravilla. Visitors should note that the nearby Ocean House Beach is off limits to non-yacht club cruisers, and the crew beach is reserved for MSC crew members only. As far as dining on the island goes, your no extra charge options will include several food trailers serving burgers, fries, and hot dogs, or the Seekers Buffet, which Skylar will tell you a bit more about right now. So the lunch buffet on the island was a little bit of a disappointment because the line was super long and the variety of food wasn't that great. But I will say the ribs that I got were fall off the bone tender and delicious. So if you are gonna eat on the island, I'd highly recommend you get the ribs. We should also note that the island does offer ice cream and coffee at the Smiling Fish, but those will both cost you extra. If you're looking for some souvenirs to help remember your time on Ocean K, you'll find those and other shopping at the Ocean Village. And right next to that, you'll find Springer's Bar, which was closed during our first visit, but is the most easily accessible bar from the ship and the only one that has TVs. Now, if we couldn't actually see the ship dock right behind us, I would probably think that we missed the boat because there is nobody here. Perhaps the things we were most excited about during our Maravilla cruises was the lighthouse show and the beach party, where cruisers can dance to a live DJ right on the beach while enjoying drinks from the bar and an impressive light show. We have to say this was one of the most memorable experiences that we've had on any cruise and one of the main reasons we'll surely be sailing with MSC again in the future. Curious how the Maravilla and MSC's private island compares to a Norwegian cruise ship and their private island? If so, you can find out by clicking here right now. Thanks for watching.